Hey guys, this is your lead practice and education nurse, Tiara. How you guys doing out there? Hey, 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 so quick, quick video for those who want to learn how to get into the nursing field, especially those that are serving in the military or maybe a military spouse, a parent, a single parent, um, um, financial issues, whatever it is. If this is God's plan for your life, then you are on the right channel. I am going to do a quick video on just information that I wish I known before I was even got started on this journey. Okay, guys, and it's been a journey. Um, currently, I am an RN student. I am also an LPN. I am also a medical assistant, and I also volunteered before. So, let's backtrack. Let's take it back. I'm now stationed in Virginia. I am not the one serving. My husband is. We've been married for 12 years. We have three children, two boys and one girl, 11, 9, and 2. Um, we've been married for 12 years. He is a wonderful man. But anyway, that'll be another <laughs> another channel. Um, so yeah, we have moved at least three, four times, I want to say, throughout his career. He has deployed three times. So yes, there was challenges, but it could be done. And let's just start here. I am the type of person that don't have nurses in their family. Uh, not a lot of people in the medical field in my family. So a lot of pressure was is still on me to perform academically and you know there's some haters that I you know attracted but hey that's life <laughs> but we're gonna move on um yes so here's some quick tips when I started I started in 2013 I was we were in between moving to another duty station which we're going to be in New York but I decided to live in Jersey so literally before I left the state I lost my job I got hurt on my job a little boy hit me here almost broke my nose, whatever. God sent me a message and showed me a vision that I was in like this office. I had a lab coat on and had my name on it. It had RN and my husband was saluting at the door. But anyway, that was God's vision for my life. Now, I was intimidating. I didn't even know what nursing was, guys. Like I have none, I never, this was like very unfamiliar to me. Now for some people, they grew up, grew up around people that is in the field. You guys have support. I started with no one in the field, like not, knowing anything about it because I was just the type of student that I stuck to like I had a tunnel vision of what I wanted to do I wanted to be a teacher and I wanted to work with children had a daycare worked in daycares and I currently got that was the last event is that I got hurt um yes yeah, so I was very devastated my first degree was an associate's degree was in education yes um and I just did random like certifications and stuff that I had to get in order to open up my daycare so I did like communicable disease C you know first aid CPR I mean that's the same I mean you know stuff like that like minimum things but I never did anything like really in the field so yes first thing you want to do for those who want to get in is do your research there are tons of information out there but I'm going to give you a few tips that I wish I known back then first tip is when I started to pursue nursing is I did not declare a major reason is you will save tons of money doing that when you declare a major going into a college they will set a they will already have um, classes that you have to take in order to meet the, the standards or requirements to apply to their program now back then guys in 2013 I started my RN first I didn't know anything about LPN but that's another story I didn't know anything about anything else in that state and it depends on your state. Um, so my requirements were chemistry one and two, micro, uh, sociology, English, math, chemistry. Did I say chemistry already? Um, psych. Now, depending on the nursing program, what you want to look at when you're researching is what is the requirements, what prereqs is required for that nursing program. So mine's required me to have psych and chow, and the other one required me to have uh, psych and lifespan. Now, so as a student, what I did to save time and money is I just took all my prereqs before I applied to the nursing program. Now, some colleges, if it's a hospital-based program, which they're not really popular now, but those programs are connected to your uh, your community college. And what happens is and when you meet your certain grade and you have a certain amount of classes, you automatically can apply to that program. You get a priority pick because they have that relationship with that school. Now, 
I didn't do it because I was not prepared to go into a nursing program without having a foundation, especially if you're just like you haven't been in like a traditional college in a while or you haven't been continuously getting that education going and you kind of took a break and it's been a while. Then you might want to get all your prereqs done first. Then you want to go and go into nursing and they'll start applying to your programs. Now, when I first applied, guys, I did not get in. And what I call the school, see, I'm very persistent. I either go down to the school and I tour the school. Then I ask questions. I do my research before I go to the school that I want to go to. And then I found out, well, they only have 30 seats per term and there's thousands of students at this school. So how am I going to get in? Like, what makes me special? Not my grades. It took that meant that it took more than my grades for me to get to these programs faster. So eventually you're gonna get in, but you just have to keep applying. You have to keep applying. So like I said, I waste my first year and a half getting all my prereqs done and making sure that they meet the grade requirement for the schools. And I think for my RN program back then it was a seventy five. So and seventy five doesn't sound too bad, guys. But I think you need like a B in certain classes and an A in certain classes. But if you go on their or the nursing school of your choice website, they will tell you what they want you to have in the grades. Now, expectations and standards have went up since 2013. We're in 2019 now. And now the expectations are higher. They want you to have A's and B's depending on the school you want to go to. So, like I said, I save money by staying undeclared. That's something you might want to look at, too. I went to a community college. Um, because I was at a community college, I was able to, um, join society. So I was able to get into an honor society, um, which was like a Psi Beta society. Now I was able to do community service within the college and then outside of the college. And then I became, ran for president and got president for another psychology, um, club. And what we did was sell cookies, you know, we went to a nursing home and we danced and we sang Merry Christmas and whatever we had to do, but it was counted as community service. Now, when I did my nursing um, application the first time, the second time I got in and I was so hype, but I didn't realize what I was really getting myself into. I thought nursing was kind of like, you know, soft and you hold your patients and it's butterflies and hearts, but it's nothing like that. Nursing is hard. The standards has changed and what you can do as a nurse is amazing. The skills and the things that you have to perform on the job is amazing. Okay, so once I did that, I got in. I was like, yes, I couldn't afford to pay for my books. That's another thing you want to research. You want to look at those prices of schools, your books, your fees, your whatever lab fees. Now they charge technology fees and whatever you need to pay and make sure and say, hey, Am I in the right place or right time to do this? Is this something that I'll be able to do if they give me a bill? Because what happens is if you can't pay, then you can't have your seat. You understand what I'm saying? And these programs are competitive. And what I tell a lot of people too, if you live in a certain state, it's okay to apply in a different state. Saying you having a problem getting to a program, you apply four times, three times, whatever it is, you're not getting it. Apply to something else. Apply to five more. Apply to the next town or the next state. You may have to travel but most likely you'll get in. So in my school, we had kids, I mean, students from New York, from, from from New York all the way across the bridge to come to Jersey to go to school, for nursing school. It's that deep, guys. I didn't realize how deep it was back then and how serious nursing really was. I was looking at these questions and I was like, oh, this is so nice. They give you a little scenario. And I'm thinking it's butterflies and cookies, y'all. This stuff had you sitting there and like, you really have to think, like, I don't know what it is. I mean, all the answers on the exam are all right, and you have to prioritize it. And I'm sitting here like, I'm supposed to know this stuff. I'm not a nurse. So, again, I was not prepared. Again, at home, I didn't have any help. My husband was deployed for the second time, I believe. I didn't have any support at home. Um, and then they were saying, hey, some nights you may be here to 11. I wouldn't be able to be there to 11. I don't have a nanny. So again, you have to sit back and analyze, okay, when is a good time for me to apply to these schools? So if I do get accepted, am I able to meet the requirements of that program? It is very time consuming. You will spend most of your time studying, most of your time going clinical, and then most of your time's in the classroom. So you might, if you can cut down on the work, working, then do it. Don't let your job tell you that 
you know, yeah, you can take off Saturday and Sunday, and the next thing you know, you're fired. People are people. You want to make sure your life lines up with what are you getting ready to do. Nursing is consuming. It takes over your life when you do it. I didn't realize that back then. I know it now. But anyway, back then, I would rent my books. I, I couldn't even pay for my books. My first set of books were $1,000 for the term. I already paid for my term out of pocket. So now it was out of money. I was taking pictures of the book. It wasn't enough. I needed to have my own book. Again, that's why I say look at what is required, how much the books are, how much the fees are, how much is this, what is my expect? I mean, what is the expectations here? I mean, that I have to meet. Um, but anyway, long story short, that first term, I didn't even make past the first term. I got like a 74.8. I wasn't even like a point away. And that was with like moderate effort to study. I didn't realize how much studying time I really had to put in. So I thought they'd get points for attendance or like, you know, I didn't even need a point. I needed like a part of a point. You know what I mean? So I was at my teacher called me. She was upset. She was like, you're going to be an awesome nurse. It's just that we don't get points. You will have to come back and try again. And then my husband was getting ready to move again and I couldn't try again. And I was so devastated. I was so hurt because I was like, God, you said this was for me. So why is it not happening? It's just that it wasn't my season. Nothing in my life was staying nursing at the moment. I had my husband overseas. I had two small children at home. And financially, I couldn't do it. That's why you want to make sure if God tells you that it's for you, it's for you. It just doesn't mean that it's going to be for you tomorrow or in the next five minutes. So what you do is you, what you work on your craft. You work on your skills. You work on what's, what you need. So when you get another chance, you're going to knock it out. So what I did was during my break, because I couldn't just go back, which I was so upset about. But anyway, I wound up doing medical assistant. Now, to so some people, they're like, ugh, medical assistant, ugh, I'm RN. Let me tell you something, honey. If you don't have an RN license, you're not an RN. You need to go and take it back. If you don't have any skills or you need to get some, you need to get some type of experience underneath your belt. First thing I wound up doing, I think we moved again, or before we moved again, I volunteered. I volunteered in a local hospital, probably was like 15 minutes from my house. I would go early in the morning and I would stay for a couple of hours a day. Because I was volunteering on the med search unit, it was so busy. I didn't even know the different kinds of units. This is my first time being exposed to the environment. I'm learning about the staff and their roles. I'm learning about my, I mean, as just being a volunteer, in, increase it over time, My what I can do as a volunteer increased. I was able to answer call bells. I was able to assist family. I was able to, you know, I had a list of tasks that I can do. I was taking specimens to the lab. I was picking up medications. And I was watching the different scenarios that was taking place right in front of me. Like emergencies was taking place. People, families was having problems, financial problems. I was watching how the nurses interact and how, you know, the roles of the doctors, the roles of the different departments. Um, when the EMT guy drops off a, a patient, I mean... It was my first time. I was so hyped. I was like, yes, I am doing something for the world. I am getting my, you know, I'm spreading my wings a little bit. And I loved it. I loved it. It's just, I know I don't like answering phones and all that stuff. So that, I know that's not for me a desk job. But definitely nursing was like, I was like, they do a lot. So it got me exposed. And I liked it. And what I left with was a recommendation letter and that I did over 60 hours of volunteer hours. And they invited me if I ever wanted to work there, I can work there. I still have that letter to this day. Another thing that I did was I, while I was waiting is I went and got my medical assistance. It only took me six months. The program, I believe, was like 10 months to 12 months. And I was done in six months because I wasn't even supposed to be there. They didn't. They knew that I was supposed to be going back to RN school. They encouraged me to do that. They didn't want me to waste my money. But I said, I don't have any skills. If medical assistant could give me skills, I'm sorry for the noise, y'all. That's my kids in and out. If medical assistant could give me skills, then I will pay for it. I paid for skills and I wound up becoming an EKG technician of phlebotomy. And during e and, uh, medical assistant, I loved it. I aced everything, of course, because it was so easy for me. Um, you know, but the skills part, I never done in my life. Like I was poking people. We got to poke each other. We got, uh, sub cues, IMs done. We did, um, e a lot of EKGs. I never did EKGs before. Um, little assessments, not, they really don't do that, but our teachers let us do as much as we can on each other. We drew blood on each other, which was awesome. Like I never drew nobody's blood before. Like that was great. 
assessing the veins, learning about the body. It was like an introduction. Again, I'm going, even though I just had this, this education in my community college, I wanted to have it as a medical assistant. Now, when I went out to externship, which is your last part of your medical assistant, I was told by the nurse, she was like, you need to go back to school because you need to be a nurse. Like you learned this job in like four days. Like I was everywhere in that clinic. I worked for OB specialist. I was going in every room, looking at every equipment. I wanted to know everything. I was cleaning everything. I was looking through their storage rooms, see what they carry, what tests am I performing. He let me do as much as I could within my scope. And I was actually in taking patients in, doing their um, interview, finding out their history, sitting them in the room, getting them ready, getting the test ready, and assisting a doctor. Like, I loved it, but I was bored. So then... After that, excuse me, after that, um, we I think we was getting ready to move. Or my husband came back. It was like in between deployments. And then I finally got my chance because I was super dope. I was like, I'm going to do medical assistant. Like, it don't, I liked it. I just know that I like patient care. I just didn't know that I was going to ever get my chance of being a nurse, which I did. So somebody said to me one day, when I was, we was getting ready to move again, it was like, well, there's so many different kinds of nurse nursing. Why you just don't go be an LPN or something else? And I'm like, what is that? And then I seen a program, I seen a commercial with LPN program one year, da, 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 get your nurse's license. And I was like, that is calling my name because literally we had one year before my husband had to go to another duty station. So like I said, anything is possible. I went down to the school I was so excited, you know, we was in a predicament where I can pay everything. My husband was making good money from overseas, so I was like, good, we can do this. And then it was like, we don't want to give you the seat because we feel like you need to wait or get your bachelor's degree in something instead of doing this. Like, why would you want to go back? And I'm like, you're not understanding my struggle. I'm just trying to get in the door, like get into the field of nursing. And so finally, they was like, if you get on the Dean's List, Ms. Fleming, we will let you in. And so long story short. I got through the program, taking the risk of only having a year, and the program was a year. I loved it. Literally, we learned something in the classroom. We was in the lab, we was in the lab practicing in the hospital room. We were touching everything. They taught us with out of our scope, um, just in case we would had to come upon situations where we would have to do certain procedures we were not supposed to do. But I went to Lincoln Tech. Lincoln Tech did their thing. I felt competent in my skills as an LPN. I was able to do wound care, trait care, Foley's. I mean, everything, everything. We looked at central lines, pick lines. I mean, you name it, we did it. Then we had our skills lab as well, which is, I mean, a Sims lab as well as well. It's like a seminate. They had like a dummy that gives birth or like can talk blank, give, do all types of stuff. And you're given a scenario as the primary nurse to go in and to, to perform. Like if this is a normal situation and it's usually like an emergency thing that happens and you have to do your emergency assessment and take care of the patient, treat the patient and call the doctor. So they also had that. So I was feeling dope. Like throughout the program, my grades were awesome. I was only thing I was failing. Only thing I was about to fail was mental health. I was not getting it. I was not really a fan because I wasn't exposed to it. I've never been to a facility before and all this. And I'm like, why did I not know, not know about LPN? Like people sleep on LPN, but LPN basically gave me that foot in the door. The thing that I needed, I needed a license and I wanted to become a nurse. LPN gave me that. Not only that, I got it in one year. It was expensive, but I was in a predicament where my children had somebody to watch them. They were in after school. I had a backup sitter. So if my school said I needed to be somewhere, I was able to be there. I was be, be on time. I was able to meet the money requirements every month. I paid out of pocket. Yes, y'all. Whatever my financial aid didn't cover, I covered the rest out of pocket so I can be at zero. So Because I, I knew I was moving again. At the end of the day... I did my boards. I moved to another state. So now for those who move to another state in between a nursing program or get ready to move before they graduate and get ready to take their boards, I can do another video on that. I was in that situation. I spent my last term in school looking for a house on base in Georgia, looking for um, doing the paperwork. So I, my focus was shifted because I'm like, now I'm getting ready to move, but I'm about to graduate. I was super hyped. I met so many great people. 
Um, and I hate to move. I hate the lifestyle of moving, 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 but that's our lifestyle. That's what pays the bills. So I ended up taking my boards and passed it on the first try. And now I'm an RN student. I graduate next March 2nd, 2020. I'm super excited. I will do another video about this. Um, but I just wanted to give those tips out there and encouragement out there for those who really know that this is for you and you just don't know how. You just not those questions you have, you're not getting answered. You're just getting a whole bunch of information. And now there's technical programs. Those pro I'm in a technical school now and I love it. I love the technical school I am in now. Um it's fast paced. I'll be R in eighteen months. Um it's five weeks a term. That's it. And I'm like getting it. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I got my chance. So God doesn't doesn't lie about his promises. It's just at the time and it's not your time and his time. It doesn't match. So you have to wait. And that waiting period is the hardest thing you could do because then within that waiting period, you can either give up or you can either work on your craft, work on whatever it is to get you to that point. Because you're going to get another situation where the doors are going to open and you're, guess what? You're either prepared or you're not prepared to step through. So I'm prophesying to those who's on here that definitely know that nursing is for you. Wait for your time. Because when your time comes, everything's going to work out. Why I say that? My time now for my RN, I pay nothing out of pocket. Zero dollars. Zero out of pocket. Zero. I'm not, and only, not only that, the, God blessed me with that ability, but also my BSN is covered. Zero dollars. All I have to do is show up to school. Not only that, my husband decided to be home and switch to reserve for now. And I have somebody watching my three kids. So when I have my rotations on the weekend at 6.30 in the morning, I can wake up at 4 o'clock and leave this door and be on time. So when God says to wait, it's a, it's a reason he's going to cover you for everything. I don't have to worry about books. I'm not struggling worrying about how I'm paying for uniforms. That's another fee when you go to a traditional college. They don't cover this stuff. Go to a technical school. Your books and your uniforms is covered. Your fee for your prep for your boards is covered. Like, they covering this stuff. It's all included. So you don't have to worry about, mm, how I'm going to pay for that. Mm, how I'm going to pay for that. The only thing they're not covering is your gas to get to clinical. But that's okay. You're just going to clinical a couple of times a week. And that's it. So, hope this was a helpful video. Hope I didn't ramble, ramble on. But I wanted to share my story. I wanted to give some great tips. I hope you guys take it on and go on your journey and be a great nurse out there. We need lots of you guys out there to become great nurses. Work on your craft. Work on the schools you want to go to. Do tours. Look at the school. Look at the rating, the passing rate for the school, for the boards. Are they passing their boards? Look at the reviews from the students. What are they saying? Go and observe. That's what nurses do. We observe. When we do an assessment, observe what is going out. What are you seeing? Drive by the school. See how the neighborhood is. Look at what they're requiring of you. See if that matches your lifestyle. If you can't do it right now, that's okay. Because probably you ain't supposed to do it right now. God is like, you got to wait. But we people, we, we people, that don't make sense. But we as people, we, we don't like, we're not patient. We're impatient in the spirit. We want things now. And that's not how God works. God is doing it because he's, lining you up to do something for him in the field for a particular person or for a particular population so he needs you to wait so the timing lines up correctly and that's why and everything else is blessed right now i don't have zero i have zero worries when i started to 2013 i was struggling because it wasn't even my time i couldn't even get to school pay for school book i couldn't do none of this stuff now i'm capable of doing it so it's on me if i mess up if i fail so don't give up. If this is God's prophecy over your life, continue to go on and pursue it. Whether you volunteer as an EMT, whether you, you go and you constantly try to find work to get stay busy. Because when you're not busy and you're waiting for your chance, it's a hard process. It could be depressing. You're watching everybody graduate and you're like, when is my time? Nursing are special people. Literally, we're special people that God handpicks out and we're well-rounded. We're not just people that's book smart. We're also knowledge smart. We also can write, write policies. We also can do patient care. Nurses are well-rounded people. We heal the sick. So people who heal the sick can't just rush it to do that. That's not something, that's not a type of job that you can just rush to college and get a degree and go do it. It takes heart. 
y'all got it so this was my channel i will be doing lots of new videos more videos to educate everybody out there hopefully i'm a good leader and i'm not saying anything that's making anybody feel some type of way but as a mom y'all hear that i got to go and i'll see y'all later